Last video, we spent time investigating how to determine if you, the pilot, are ready for flight. In the next couple of videos, we'll be exploring how to determine if the aircraft is legal and ready for flight. Many pilots have used the AERO acronym to help remember what documents are required in the airplane in order to operate legally. <laughs> Perhaps you do too. However, how much do you really know about that little checklist? I'll bet during this six-minute video, you will learn at least one new thing. Are you ready? <laughs> then let's go. <laughs> the documents required to be in the aircraft by the FAA are A. Airworthiness Certificate R. Certificate of Registration R. Radio Station License O. Operations Manual and W. The Weight and Balance Documents But what specific regulations identify the need for these documents? Let's start with the Airworthiness Certificate and the Certificate of Registration. Both of these are mentioned in 14 CFR 91.203. Part A states that except as provided in 91.715, no person may operate a civil aircraft unless it has in it the following. 1. An appropriate Airworthiness Certificate and 2. An effective U.S. Registration Certificate. Now let's take a look at the requirements for a radio station license. First, the requirement for this doesn't come from the FAA. Instead, it falls under the auspices of the Federal Communications Commission, or FCC. The official regulation is 47 CFR 87.18. Part B notes that aircraft stations are licensed by rule and do not need an individual license issued by the FCC unless the aircraft station is making international flights or communications. Therefore, a radio station license is not required if you're only flying within U.S. airspace. <laughs> On a side note, since most aircraft are not flown internationally, many instructors remove this R from the acronym, making it A-R-O-W instead of A-R-R-O-W. U.S. Customs has been given the job of enforcing the FCC regulations for U.S. registered aircraft, so while nobody may check the license on your way out of the U.S., the station license will be required when re-entering the country. Next is the operations manual. To be fair, the operations manual is only part of the requirement. The full requirements are spelled out in 14 CFR 21.5 and 14 CFR 91.9. .9. 14 CFR 21.5 states that if your aircraft was delivered after March 1st of 1979, it must have an FAA-approved airplane flight manual, or AFM, in the aircraft. Prior to that date, the documentation provided with aircraft was what the manufacturer believed appropriate. After that date, the FAA specified what an AFM should contain and 14 CFR 23.2620 Part A notes the required contents. 14 CFR 91.9 .9 Part B notes that no person may operate a U.S. registered civil aircraft, one, for which an airplane or rotorcraft flight manual is required by 21.5 of this chapter, unless there is available in the aircraft a current approved airplane or rotorcraft flight manual, or the manual provided for in 121.141B and two, for which an airplane or rotorcraft flight manual is not required by 21.5 of this chapter unless there is available in the aircraft a current approved airplane or rotorcraft flight manual, approved manual material, markings and placards, or any combination thereof. So really, whether or not an AFM is required, the same information must be in the aircraft regardless of the format. Additionally, while placards are only mentioned in Part 2, the POH of most aircraft usually states something like the following in the beginning of the limitations section. Includes operating limitations, instrument markings, and basic placards necessary for the safe operation of the airplane. <laughs> so, not only is the manual required, but the placards are important too. Finally, let's take a look at the requirement for the weight and balance documents. This is probably the trickiest of them all. While almost everyone believes this information is required, I've not been able to find anything in 14 CFR 91 that specifically requires the weight and balance document be in the airplane. However, there are a couple of ways that it is implied. First, as discussed earlier, if your aircraft was delivered after March 1st of 1979, it needs an AFM, and loading information is part of the required contents per 14 CFR 23.2620. Second, in 2007, Order 8900.1 became effective. This order directs the activities of aviation safety inspectors and other flight standard service employees. Volume 6, Chapter 1, Section 4 discusses how to conduct a Part 91 ramp inspection. 
subsection 6-95 part D specifically notes that weight and balance documents, including a list of equipment appropriately revised, should be available for the inspector's review. So, even though there's no specific regulation within 14 CFR 91 requiring the current weight and balance document be in the aircraft, it is highly recommended. So there you have it. How'd we do? Were we able to find something that you didn't know? Either way, please let me know in the comments section below. If this video was helpful, please hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing. And also, if you're looking for more information on airspace, flight planning, risk management, I'd recommend watching this video next. <laughs> As always, thank you for watching, fly safely, and I'll see you next time.